Welcome into Beat the Bookie, I'm John Dales, and oh how the tables have turned. After going negative my first time on the show, I received all sorts of hate, vitriol, you name it, and what do I do the next time on the program? How about the fifth best showing in the Calvin Cristoforo era on Beat the Bookie? I went up $37, but let's take a look at what happened last week on the program. There were a few Super Bowl bets being thrown out by Noah Searson, and not a lot of winners. In any case, I'm here to make you some money, so let's move on, and in moving on, we start with our big games. And for that, we go to Illinois in the first big game of the week, taking on Michigan State. The Illini are one and a half point favorites, and I say the Illini win by one and a half plus. Kofi Coburn is too good. Illinois just whooped Indiana on the road too. I don't think the Illini are afraid of anybody playing anywhere. I don't care if they're playing at the Breslin Center, the CHI Health Center, anywhere in America. Give me 15 bucks on the Illini to cover. Next big game of the week, we go Texas Tech against Texas. There's a lot of bad blood between these two schools. We know that because the last time they played, the Red Raiders ran away with it. And Texas Tech is three and a half point dogs on the road, which I find ridiculous to be honest with you. Take that last game into account. Roll with Pat Mahomes. Roll with Mike Leach. Roll with the Red Raiders. 15 bucks on Tech to come. Now our final big game. Number 25 Alabama is a six and a half point dog against number four Kentucky. Now do you remember when I came on this show and I put Coach Cal in Kentucky in my back pocket? Well I do, because I said the Irish would cover and beat the kiddies outright. They did both of that. Notre Dame took down Kentucky earlier this year. I'm here to do much of the same today. Rupp Arena is dead. Even though they're not playing the Irish this time, there's no shot Kentucky is covering six and a half. I got Bama to cover. And now we go to my games. For that, we start with DePaul taking on Seton Hall. The Blue Demons just got Javon Freeman Liberty back. And America knows DePaul should have beaten Providence. The Blue Demons are eight and a half point dogs here. They should have beaten Providence without Javon Freeman Liberty, by the way. I've also gone into the lab. I've done the math. I've come up with the conclusion that Seton Hall stinks. I don't care if Kadari Richmond's your point guard. The Pirates don't be, deserve to be eight and a half point favorites against anybody. Let me finish with this. DePaul will, of course, lose this game. But only only after a couple, after leading the entire game. That much I know as a Blue Demon fan. That said, the Blue Demons certainly cover. Give me $10 on DePaul to cover eight and a half points. Next game that I'm choosing, oh, Ohio State is playing Iowa, and I made a promise that I would never bet on Ohio State football again after they made me eat 19 fish fillets. But the Buckeyes did beat Michigan in basketball. They've earned my trust back on the hardwood. Give me $10 down on the Buckeyes to cover minus five against Iowa. And for my last pick we're sticking with my teams I'm going with the fighting Irish who are five and a half point underdogs against Wake Forest we all know I'm a Mike Bray guy and there's no reason for Wake Forest to be such a big favorite with my third game of the week I'm throwing down 10 bucks on Notre Dame money line yes I'm calling it again I'm picking another ND upset on BTB now let's not move too far away from Winston-Salem because my lock of the week also happens to be the Irish to cover that five and a half point spread let's throw down 15 bucks on the Irish to cover that's a quarter Order of our total hundred dollars being placed on Notre Dame. I'm confident in the Golden Domers. Wake Forest is fraudulent. They're not winning any games, and they're certainly not winning any game by six plus points. Okay, now we go to my game you've never heard of. For that, we go to the Rust Belt, where IUPUI is a 17 and a half point underdog at a Youngstown State. Now look, I've heard all about IUPUI. I say it takes guts to openly recruit players in the middle of the season as a D1 program. And hey, after that, the Jaguars just won their last game on the road. They beat Robert Morris. So that's a group of guys that are rallying together after a brutal season of three and 22. Another road test for the Jags today. I think they cover that ridiculous spread again. Give me five bucks down to my boys from IUPUI to win. And now we're going to go to our parlay and my Illinois parlay coming up here. I've got DePaul plus eight and a half I already talked about. Illinois minus one and a half and then Northwestern minus three and a half. I talked to you about the Blue Demons and Illini. Let's not forget about the Wildcats. Northwestern no longer. The Cats are 12 and 12, but out of their 12 losses, 11 of them have been by single digits. And you almost just took down Purdue on Wednesday. The Cats are covering that three and a half point spread against Minnesota easily. So we're putting down 10 bucks on this parlay to win back 59.96. I was chirped for my last parlay on this show for not having good enough odds. Ride with me on this one. Not gonna be chirped here. Ride with the state of Illinois. Ride with the land of Lincoln. Ride with the Illinois parlay. 
Okay, let's take a look at our recap with our big games. I got Texas Tech covering against Texas. That's one of the big ones. Then I got DePaul in my games covering against Seton Hall. And we'd see DePaul again on the next page because I've got the Blue Demons, the Fighting Illini, and the Wildcats in that Illinois parlay. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this edition of Beat the Bookie. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, you can never lose when you're having fun unless you fade me. Then you're not having fun anymore. Enjoy the games, everybody.